What is up, everybody? Sysadmin Sean here, and we have some amazing Sysadmin news today. At least it's amazing for me. I hope it's amazing for you. As you can see right up here, Veeam Backup and Replication 12.2 came out. And if you read the uh, title of this video, you know why that's important. That is right we have proxmox integration into veeam now so if you've been one of those customers of vmware and veeam for a long time and you've really been considering the migration from uh, vmware to proxmox this is a great new way to do that because you can literally take the backups you've been collecting in veeam and restore them directly to proxmox hosts as long as you've got storage available your network's available things like that they will restore now there are some caveats obviously um, the first thing I want to point out is that this uses a different licensing model, which I, is probably the same for a lot of the other options if you're not using VMware. So you need to be on the universal licenses or have a lot of instance license. It treats it as the same way you would treat an agent backup, but it doesn't need the agent on the VMs to do the backup. What it looks like it's doing from our point of view and what the testing we did yes today um, is that it's just sort of copying the files and then store them somewhere. It's taking a copy of the data folders and storing them somewhere. Um, we haven't tested a lot of incrementals, but we're doing that tonight. We're letting some jobs take incremental backups, but we don't have a lot of data change in our Proxmox environment yet. We'll have to see how that goes to compare it against Proxmox backup server. Um, the next caveat is if you restore a system, um, one of the ones we, ran, we tried was an Oracle Linux 7.9 box. Um, its partitions were LVM. They were VMDK files, we restored them, they're LVM, and when we booted it, it couldn't detect any of the LVM, so it wouldn't mount. It would just kick to, to draw cut or dray cut, whatever it's called. What I found was when it restored the hard drives, it put them in a SCSI uh, adapter and the drive name was SATA0. Well, I did a little Googling and it said, change that to IDE and you'll be good to go. You cannot change it in the GUI so you have to get into the host that the VM lives on, navigate to the configuration file, and then you can edit that because it's just a plain text YAML file, much like a VMware configuration file. I changed it to ID of zero because it didn't matter. It was a testing box anyway, and boom, booted right up. Stuff's working out of the gate really well. <clears throat> I will say, though, that you probably won't want to, if you're going to be using this for migrations, for instance, you probably won't want to set these machines to auto boot on restore completion because the default CPU is KVM64, and you'll want to go in there and change that to like max or host or whichever level you feel you need to do that. Um, let's see, what else? We restored directly to Ceph. We, you have to have a snapshot drive, which is simply just like a, a regular file system drive, non Ceph basically. Um, we had a different partition. You do have to install a, a basically a proxy on the Proxmox hosts, much like you would do with regular Veeam, except this is a little Linux appliance and it powers up when it's needed to do jobs and then it shuts down when it's done. So it's not just sitting around consuming resources, needing patches, you know, concerns about possibly break-ins. And of course you don't really know the login. I'm sure they have it in the documentation somewhere. Um, other big features, Nutanix got a major overhaul, I'm assuming because of the Proxmox. Lots of stuff is in there. Um, and it's really cool. I do highly recommend if you are if you've been considering this option, now is the time to download this upgrade. It's really simple. You just pull down the ISO for the upgrade, you run the install scripts, um, and then you're done. It's just a dot release upgrade for Veeam. So it's not like there's a whole lot going on. And then you just add the Proxmox hosts, it scans them, it deploys the little workers, and you're ready to start taking backups and restoring. We tested Windows, Linux, we tested backups, of Proxmox machines, just to see how that worked. There are some sticky things there too. If you have been using Veeam and VMware tags, that doesn't seem to be available yet in the Proxmox option. You can add machines, you can add the entire cluster if you want to, and it'll just back up everything that that cluster has access to, or you can add separate machines like a lot of people do and but there's no way to be like look for these tags in proxmox and add backups to that we do that in our current environment we have different tags based on data governance requirements and that's kind of the big thing there is that that's how that works um but let's see were there anything else i wanted to talk about that's pretty much it from the get-go um 
everything has just kind of pretty much worked. Now, again, we did have the little hard drive hiccup. We've had some, the CPU thing is kind of weird. So if you're planning a migration, expect some downtime, but just a few minutes, really. Uh, the VMs feel really snappy inside Proxmox. Things are going well. Um, and again, you have to have those universal licenses where it can be a virtual machine or a physical appliance or an application or unstructured data. Um, those licenses that get scooped up as part of instances, those are what you need to have um, because they count as any type. So your perpetual socket style isn't going to work if you want to take a backup in Proxmox. But if you're just doing VMware restores into Proxmox, that does not require a license at this time until you start backing up that machine you restored in Proxmox. So that's really cool. I would love to show some screenshots and stuff, but I don't want to accidentally give away any sort of confidential information about my workplace. And I do not have anything like that set up in my lab. Um, but if you are interested in more about Veeam and Proxmox together, leave a comment down below, uh, like this video, subscribe, send me, uh, you know, an email, whatever you need to do to let me know that you're more interested in hearing about Veeam and Proxmox together and what we see in our findings as we migrate. We are scheduled to completely migrate our data center from VMware to Proxmox by October 21st. Now, again, we only have like 150 VMs total to deal with. A lot of our stuff is SaaS. We have tons of failover in HA, so downtime's not an issue. And we don't run a lot of extra data centers anywhere. And we don't need a lot of that feature set that people that are staying with VMware do need. And that's justifiable. If you need extra data centers and linking and things like that, stay with VMware. That They still have all of that on lock. Proxmox just makes more sense for us because we're getting smaller and smaller. Things are becoming containers and LXCs and and all this stuff where it's not really servers anymore and they're not critical services. It's not 24 seven. We don't have on call, things like that. So we can go to this kind of product that has a lot more features than we were utilizing in VMware or paying for um, that we might be able to kind of dabble with here. Um, and now that we've got Veeam to be able to restore all our VMs from backup instead of having to do the, uh, the tragic online migration tool, which does work well, except in our environment where we're running vSAN. So since we've got vSAN, we're going to Ceph. We were concerned about VMware or Veeam restoring to Ceph, but that is okay. It restores to Ceph, no problem. Um, just as long as you have all your file systems configured. Oh, the workers, I don't know if I mentioned this. The workers that get deployed on the hosts need to have the local storage on each host enabled just to deploy the ISO. So right now, Veeam is configured to build a worker, deploy the ISO to spin up that worker, to the local storage on the host you pointed on and then spin up the worker. After that, you can probably disable the local storage. We're gonna test that. Um, but that's really about it. Uh, that was pretty quick. Again, let me know if you have any questions. If, you, if you're curious anymore about what we've been doing and how we're doing it, just uh, ask me down below in the comments and we'll see you in the next one.